If the area of triangle ABC is at least 48 but no more than 60 and Y is an integer as shown in figure, we can calculate the value of X by first figuring out the potential values of Y that are coming 8, 9, and 10. Next, using the ratio of sides of similar triangles, we can calculate the relationship between X and Y. Finally, plugging in the values of Y, we can figure out the possible values of X. In order to find the angle X formed by line S and R as shown in the figure, we can first calculate the angle adjacent to 106 by subtracting it from 180. Similarly, the angle adjacent to X will be 180 minus X. Finally, by adding the three internal angles of the triangle and equating it to 180, we can get the value of X. In order to figure out the angle TUR as shown in the figure, we can start by plugging in the angles of the triangle given to us as 48 and 86. The third angle can be calculated by subtracting these two from 180 degrees. That is coming around 46. Next, we know that for a straight line, the angle will be 180. Subtracting 46 from it will give us our second angle of 134. In addition, we are provided 85 and 162 adjacent angle to that can be calculated by subtracting 162 from 180. Finally, the angle TUR can be calculated by subtracting the remaining three angles of quadrilateral from 360. To find the angle X given to us in the figure, we know that side AC and CD are equals to one another. That means that the angle opposite to these sides will also be equals to one another. Now, knowing the property that sum of three angles is equals to 180, we can solve for this angle coming around 38 degrees. Next, we are provided that EBC is equals to 45 degree and we know that a straight line has an angle of 180. Subtracting 104 from it will give us 76. The third side can be calculated by subtracting the two angles from 180. That is coming around 59. Finally, X is calculated using the same property of triangles. If the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 624 centimeters and the height of this triangle is k times square root 3, we can calculate the value of k by first figuring out the length of the side of the triangle and then applying the Pythagorean theorem on one of the right angle triangles to solve for k. In order to figure out the angle QMR as shown in the figure, we can start by calculating the angle adjacent to 60 degree by subtracting it from 180. Next, we are given that the side MP and PR are equals to one another. That means that the angle opposite to these sides will be also equal. Finally, adding the three internal angles of the triangle and equating it to 180, we can get the value of QMR. If the value of A is 43 degree, and B is 122 degree as shown in the figure. Can you calculate the angle W? If in triangle ABC, the measure of angle B is 90 degrees, and BD is the altitude of the triangle, whereas side AB is 15 and the side AC is 23 greater than the side AB. Now to calculate the value of BC over BD, we know that both angles B and D are 90 degrees, and angle C is the same for both triangles. So, we can use the ratio of the sides of the similar triangles to solve for BC over BD, which is coming 38 over 15. To calculate angle X in the given figure, we can begin by noting the sides RT and TU are equal, which means that the angle opposite to these sides are also equal. Next, we can calculate the third side of triangle SVU by subtracting the other two angles from 180. Finally, we can find the value of X by subtracting 116 from 180. To calculate the length NQ shown in the figure, we can start by solving the third side of the triangle MNP by using the Pythagorean theorem. Next, the two triangles MNP and QNP are similar as the internal angles of these triangles are same. 
Finally, by taking the ratio of sides of similar triangles, we can solve for the value of NQ. For triangle RST, the angle R is 63 degrees. In order to find which of the given options could be the measure of angle S, we use the property of triangle that sum of their internal angles is equals to 180. Solving the expression give us the sum of angle S and T that is coming 117. This means that each one of them should be less than 117. The only option we have that is less than that is 116. For the figure shown, point A, B, C, and D are on the same line, and line FC is parallel to line ED, whereas line BE and ED are perpendicular to each other. Now, to solve for the angle FCB, we know the parallel lines will make the same angle if intersected by a straight line, so angle D is same as angle C here. Now, for angle B, we know for a straight line, the angle is 180. By subtracting 147 from it, we can get the angle EBD that is coming 33 degrees. Finally, we can use the property of the triangle that the sum of three internal angles of a triangle is equals to 180. Subtracting the other two angles from it, we can get our required angle.